Copperhead Custom. Today we're working on wrong car. And today we're working on this. Our 48 Bedford $2,000 Hot Wheels Legends Tour build. Say that four times fast. And today I need your help. So stick around and see what I need your help for. So yes, today I need your help. But before we get to that, let's do a quick recap for the newbies. So like I said, this is a 48 Bedford. We picked this up in the middle of a paddock that had been used by target practice by the farmer's kids. We've given it a six inch rooftop and we've put it on a Holden WB one tonner chassis with a Holden 202 cubic inch six cylinder motor. We've given the patina this crazy clear coat but we've added pearl lesson paint. And the paint now changes from green to purple and gold. And we've made this ridiculously good looking tray out of an old pallet. These guards are off of a semi trailer. Don't forget the torque twisted two tires with gold rims. And in here, we've used office chairs for seats, a bamboo fence for the back, and we've lined the roof lining and door cards with all these old vintage antique advertisements. So it's come a long way really, really quickly. And like I stated, we're trying to build this for $2,000 Australian, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of money. And then we're gonna enter it in next year's Hot Wheels Legends Tour. So in the last episode, we did the rear guards and we mounted these front guards. So you would think that we would continue with that. Yes, you would think we would continue with that, but We've had a pretty hectic week this week. Yes, we have. If those of you remember about these things, these elbows of mine are no good and I've been in hospital getting my operations lined up. And the other followers of the channel will also know that we had a black Chrysler sitting right about where you were. But it is not there. What does that mean? Means we sold it. So yes, that's right. So between those two items, it's chewed up most of my week. And now we are on Sunday night and we haven't even started our video. Okay, so there's a lot of dribble, but what do you want us to help you with? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if we look back in the interior and we look in the center here at our gear shift lever that I made. Now this was a shifter that I made for our other Bedford. Yes, we've already built one of these. If you haven't seen that, you might want to go down later on and look at it, but be warned, we're talking bad videos. So this is the shifter we made for that, and we have made it and put it into this build. But we had a subscriber who gave me an idea about making one out of a shovel handle, and I also have another idea of one that it's half built of using. So what I'm going to do is we're going to walk up to the top into our lay down yard and look for a, I've got some old shovels up there. We're gonna to try to find one of them. We're gonna see what else we've got lying up there we could make one out of. And then we've got our, if you remember, our snake carved walking stick. So what we're gonna do is make two or three more shifters in this episode, quickly install each one, and then you guys are gonna decide which shifter we run in this car. So the one that has the most likes and comments is the one that we will use. So now, before we go and do that, I have had some people be a bit concerned about these seats being too small and that I won't see out of the dash. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm looking out of that window just fine. So as you probably can't quite tell on camera is this cab is very, very small. So maybe now with me sitting in it, now I am a big boy, but maybe with me sitting it, you can actually get a better idea of how small this little truck is. It is tiny. So me sitting in this chair, it is so comfortable. The chair, the office chair is so comfortable and my vision is perfect. So my eyesight is right here. So it is perfect. Now remember if, if we angle the front of this car down, it means your vision gets worse and worse and worse. So, but basically the top of my vision is the top of this. So yeah, it is not too low. So there's one more thing we need to address. And that is that in last week's episode, we asked everyone what they would prefer us to build a gasser type. We can't not building a gasser, but a gasser style look about the front end, i.e. 
we would not be putting a straight axle in it, but just be putting some really tall springs in to raise the front up, or to do what my original plan was, to get the front nice and low and really have some attitude on this car. And the consensus is, there's a few people that think it would be cool as a gasser, there's a few people sitting on the fence, because the car looks pretty good, and it would look good either way, but the majority of people are saying to lower the front. So that is what we are going to do. So that's one thing that we will try to continue to do is to include you guys in on these builds. In the meantime, we're gonna lower the front because that's what you guys decided. But in this one, I want you to decide what shifter we use. So with all that said, our next step will be to go up the top into the lay down yard. We're gonna grab one of our other nose cones while we're there. But while we're up there, let's see what we have that we could make potentially another one or two gear shifters out of. So with that said, let's head up there to where we got all our old rusty relics. Oh, and hey, check this turd out. This is a Commodore, Holden Commodore VT. So this is a 2000 Commodore. And we took this in <laughs> on trade for the Chrysler. No, we didn't swap it. This was just, um, a uh, cheap this was his <laughs> car and it is like i said a turd but it was sitting out the front the day we did the sale and i think i've already sold it so you'll see this kicking around for a few days we're not touching it we're not going to waste our time or money on that car but if you're wondering what that turd was <laughs> that's what that is Ooh, and on the way we also got to suss out some bonnets so in here I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but this is another Bedford. But these are the smaller little baby, even smaller again Bedfords. They're called a PC Bedford. And this has a bonnet. Admittedly, it's a bit rusted out bonnet, hood, whatever you want to call it. But we've got another one of those bonnets down on the other little baby Bedford next to the shed. So we'll have to suss them out. And if you see this... I've got to plant them all. Okay, so we're up here in the lady and yard. You can see here, here's another Bedford. So this is our other nose cone, but I think this one is a bit bigger, a bit taller. So this is very similar cab, but this is a bigger cab. It has a longer floor through there. As you can see, the motor's not set back in and the guards don't go back as far into the doors. So this is the next size up. So what it was, was they built the little ones we're doing to carry more weight because it brought the cab weight over the front axles which meant they could put more weight over the back so that is what that is even though these are bigger the other ones were rated at a higher rate now this here is a 36 ford but i don't know if we'll ever do it now normally there's a path that runs through here but in the last month with all our weather everything's gone crazy so i'm gonna have to fight my way in so we'll come back in a second this is what i've dug out We've got these two shovel handles. So what I'm thinking is, is we'll cut them down here somewhere. And uh, like, for argument's sake, we could probably cut and use this and then weld an, a bolt to this is kind of what I'm thinking. We may even use a bit of that curve to off to get it to push forward. I don't know. We'll work out how long we want it. Or we cut it, you know, where we want it up here and we put a piece of pipe over the top. So we've got these two different ones here. So we've got the two different handles and then this wood will get, you know, we'll do our technique on the wood. And then this here is our nose cone. And this one is pretty well in good condition, yeah? Now it is red, but what we'll do is we'll patina paint it first. We'll look at the badges. We may do some badge swapping and some chrome trim adding off of the other one and then I think we'll use this one because this one is really really solid let's take all this back down I'll go from there okay we're back down here now here's our two noses and they are different as you can see like admittedly this one is banged up but it does look a little bit wider than what this one looks this one looks a lot narrower the other difference is if we look at it from the top view we look at this this has a bit more of a curve in it whereas this one's a bit 
squarer across the front and probably doesn't quite come out as far because of that point as you can see side on that one has a big curve and this one is quite square so in saying all of that will it work well i think if we look down the bottom we have these curved cutouts to marry in to the front this one doesn't but that's easily solved not 100 percent if we're using this one yet we will sit it on and have a little look ski and make sure it's gonna fit and see what it looks like it may it honestly may not look right because it may be too skinny so yeah what one do you guys like the look of now we're not doing this in this episode but just to look at the nose cones see this one's wider it's got more curve in it or well, we got this one it's a bit more flatter a bit squarer and boxier Oakley. so you would have just seen we made these two shifter handles so we've made this totally wooden handled one now if you watch what we did we just cut the ends off and we cut them on a slight angle so we let the curve just take in a little bit then we've welded just welded a plate washer we could have done anything there ground that up welded the bolt on which is our correct thread what we'll do is we'll screw a nut on here but before we do that we'll put our boot on with our washer then we'll put our other nut on and we'll have the boot sitting up here we'll screw this in pull the boot down and then we'll have the brown washer sitting just there so you sort of won't really notice anything it just sort of looks like that goes in so it should sort of work i think so what we've done is then we uh once we got that welded on we gave it a, a quick sand up with the grinder uh, we threw the the um, blowtorch on it throw a bit of just a little bit of burn in the in the inside it's quite dark actually this one we threw the oil on and then we threw the coat of varnish in between i painted the bolt down the bottom here we just painted that with the brown and we actually varnished the metal as well and we did the exact same process on this one now this is the one with the little metal t-handle so just slightly different. So when we finish, once they've dried, we'll probably have to give them a couple more coats yet before we go and install them. And the same process. We will put our boot on with the big plate washer so that it will just be like the plate washer. It'll be the same size as that, so it should look trick. And then we'll put our nut on underneath and then we screw it on. We do our nut on to make it firm and then the washer will sit on top. So that, theoretically, should work so we've got those two made so yeah i know the light's probably pretty terrible 
but they're hanging out to dry so I can't do much. We'll take them under better light so you can see better later. And then we got this one. This is our next one we're going to make. The walking stick. Now what I've decided to do, I've just got this bit of RHS. I'm just going to cut this down around here somewhere. Cut that off. We're going to drive that. It's tight. We're just going to drive that on. Something like that. We'll paint this in the brown. This is what I'm thinking. And then we'll weld the nut on the bottom. Now, whether I use that whole length or not, I might even cut this down in half, maybe. So it's a bit shorter. But that's what I think. We'll just have that painted brown. Should look okay. And we'll just weld our, our bolt straight into there. And we may actually kick, because this one's dead straight, we may actually kick that bolt on a slight little angle and we'll quickly make that one but we'll do that one this afternoon this one doesn't have to be varnished or anything so this one's quick and easy to make because i have to go out we've bought ourselves another car at auction so i've got to go and pick it up so i've just got to move the turd move the trailers get the car trailer hooked up and go and pick it up so am i going to show you it i don't know yet <laughs> of course i'll show you we're going to buy another little suzuki swift to sell so We've gone and bought the parts all for it yesterday to fix. It should be a quick, easy fix, and it should be on the market by the end of the week. So with all that said, I am going to see you maybe this afternoon, maybe tomorrow. Oakley doakley, we are back. It's the next day, late in the afternoon now. We gave these another coat this morning, and they're pretty much dry now, ready to work with. So they've had two coats, so they should be pretty good. And here we have our other one, and we've gone and got a bit of pipe to suit. Now what we're going to do is drive that on all the way. It's only just in there. We'll drive that all the way on. Then we'll get our other bolt somewhere around here, and we will weld the bolt on there, maybe on, like I said, on a slight angle. We'll mask this up quickly, and we'll just paint this in the brown, and I think that should be sufficient. Now... In the background here, had to go pick up a flip car, so we picked, we, we bought this on Monday. I went and bought the parts for it on Monday, and then yesterday we went and picked it up, and yesterday I removed all the broken parts. So it was hit basically here in the back, and we've replaced the tailgate, rear bumper, rear tail light, and I've pulled the rear beaver panel I've pulled out and dollied up all nice and neat and as you can see all our gaps and stuff are good and our plastics are all back on everything's looking good in here so this has not taken me long at all we're talking maybe an hour tear down maybe two hours three hours at the most to do all the repair work and put all the new parts and panels on now we're very close so this is all bolted up properly as you can see here this is the wing that was on the existing tailgate now that's an aftermarket wing so I've actually got that up for sale I should get $200 for that wing so this is a Swift standard wing that should be on on the Swift Sports now the tailgate I could not find a decent tailgate for a Swift Sport I had to get a standard Swift tailgate. Now they're identical but they don't have the wing. But I picked up the wing all at the same wrecking yard. I've got the tail light, the rear bumper, the tailgate and the wing. So what we have to do though is paint the wing and the little caps in the black. Now I do have paint. I've already got paint. So we need to paint that and clear coat it. And we've got a little bit of fade here but I'm not going to mess with it. This will get covered but we're going to polish it. And try to polish it out we've got to stick our swift our sport badge on and we've got to give it a service we want to put two new tires on the back which i have but other than that the car's pretty good um it actually has a huge amp under the seat so we're going to pull the seat out and rip that amp out and sell that separately but other than that the car itself is pretty good once i give it a cut and polish so yes it's got a dash mat floor mats so it needs a full interior detail we're going to pull this seat and get the amp out getting the wiring out of it then we will wash it and polish the outside inside it detail we'll give the motor a detail we'll give uh, the motor an oil change filter change an oil change and then i think we are uh, and once that's painted and on that's going up on the market so that's pretty good 
quick, really quick flip. So that's, we're talking like a two, three day process, like not even, as in purchase, pick up, repair, up for sale, all within a few days. So that's a very cool, this has been a really good one to do. Haven't recorded any of it, I've just done it off camera, but I just thought I'd call in and show you. And if you're interested in seeing a bit of this stuff, drop some comments on it, because I'm gonna start doing some more. So this is what, we rewind a bit, that's what I used to do. I used to do Suzuki Swifts, yeah? And I used to pump one to two out a week and sell parts and wreck them and sell the motors and repair them and you name it, I was a one-stop Swift shop. So we're gonna start doing some more, but I'm gonna be very fussy on the ones that I buy. So that there is a clean title, not written off, nothing. It's a 100% clean title, so it gets a roadworthy and can be sold. So no inspection, no sitting on the car for months and months with it sitting in the background waiting for the inspection dates. And so, yes, we're gonna start buying some, but I'm gonna buy, basically back in the day, I would do anything. I would, I would put whole new fronts on them, airbags, you name it, we used to do everything. But now we're gonna be quite fussy on what we pick. So if you wanna see a bit more of that sort of stuff, drop some comments. Um, and we'll mix it up, you know, with some of our projects and some videos on our flip cars. But any rate, we'll quickly do this. Okay. So there's that handle. Hopefully we can see that. So that there is, uh, boom, boom, okay, it needs a bit of a, um, I had to trim the bolt so that actually moved a little bit then, but yeah, so there's that one, that's in gear there, so we've got that handle, I don't know if I want to put them all in, or I'll just show you the four, hey, so there's that one there, come around here, here is our snake handle. Okay, I'll put them in. Okay, there is the snake handle. That looks pretty trick, doesn't it? Pretty trick indeed. There's a bit of lighting on the department. So, that's pretty trick, the snake handle. And we haven't put our boot on, of course, because we're taking them off and on, off and on, off and on. But that's pretty trick. Don't mind that at all. All right, next one. All right, and there is the next one. The T-handle spade. That's pretty trick too. <laughs> I don't know which one I like. I really don't know. I really don't know. I like them all. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool as well. So, I don't know. We've got four, I'm gonna pull, I'll pull that one out. We'll put it on the tray. We'll have a look at all four. And we need you guys to try to decide which one you like the best. Oakley, da 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 Oakley. So, here we've got our four. This is what we've come up with. We'll call this one number one. This is our spade handle. Okay, so the one with the metal T at the top, we'll call that our spade handle. So if you like that one the best, that's number one, spade. Number two, we'll call, well, it's the snake walking stick. If you like that one. Now, they're all a bit different length too. As you can see, we'll, we'll line all the bottoms up at a pretty even length. So you can see, they're all slightly different. This one being the tallest. This one being the shortest. So number two is our snake walking stick handle. Beautiful piece. It's a beautiful piece actually. So whether we use that one. Number three is our, we'll call that our handbrake handle. Now this is a period piece. It was out of one of the trucks, I'm not sure which. We've actually got the, the handle moving but it doesn't do anything. And this was a period piece and we actually put this is a bit of antique wood off of one of the builds that we bolted onto it, okay? So we've got that one there. And then we've got number four, 
which is our wooden handle. So we'll call this one our shovel handle number four. So tell me which one you guys like the best out of those four. Okay, they're all they're all pretty cool. Now admittedly, these ones, these two have had the same wood technique, even though they are quite on the dark side. This one has had a slightly different technique. This one originally was going to be for the Oakland, but the shifter I'm using is a B&M that I've bought for that. It's a B&M Star Shifter, and it's it's not really going to work with this that well. So I think this is better off in a manual at this stage, or it gets saved for another build. It's not an issue. If you haven't seen this, let's just zoom in close so you can see. It's hand carved. It's quite nice. But like I said, the wood is slightly different. But if we come to the inside, it is maybe slightly similar to the chairs especially the underneath side you know it's not far off realistically it's it's pretty good so yeah it doesn't look out of place the wood being slightly different we've got our brown painted metal handle which was our original one that we threw in this this was actually made for our other bed fit originally so like I said, drop your comments, which one you guys want. Whatever gets the most votes is the one we're going to run. Uh, personally, personally, my vote, I'm leaning towards these two, I think I like. I think I like the, the spade, number one, more so than the wooden. They're sort of, you know. So for me, and the snake is good. So I'm sort of 50-50 on these. I'm not sure which one. Then I would be, this would be three and this would be four for me, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm not really quite sure which one. And we could swap them around and change them as well. And they will all get used. But like I've said, comment below on it. Build is getting there, guys. We've made a lot of progress in a very short time on this build. I think we're, uh, it's probably been six or eight weeks of build time. And you know it's not full time, so that's not a lot of time in the in the car itself. Hours is ridiculously not a lot. Um, money wise, we're still good, and we've also got all the parts to rebuild our front end as well, so we can look at doing that and then lowering the front, which is what you guys decided. It's lowering the front and really seeing what that little sucker is going to look like. Anyway, we've got other we've got heaps of other stuff on as well. We've got our flip cars. We're going to start doing some more flip cars. We've still got this beautiful 30, uh, 38 Chevy that we're still on. We haven't forgotten about it. We've been held up with a diff center. So while we had no diff center, I just thought I'd have a break. Uh, there's not a lot to do in it. Once we get the diff center, it's a few odd jobs here and there. Tail shaft, some brake lines, a bit of wiring, uh, mount the bonnet. You know, we've got a few little things, nothing major. And then we've still got this. This Perla here, this is a beautiful car at 28 Oakland, and we've got lots we can start doing on that. We've got the shifter in, we can start looking at making the exhaust, making the tail shaft, and um, same, wiring. We can do a wheel it run on the motor, uh, wiring, and um, plumbing, and, and then that one's heading off too. So soon we will have all three of these, won't be far away. With all of that said, I'm going to say... Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.